that right there behind me is my first attempt at a wire vertical antenna. Let's, uh, let's go check it out. Sun's getting pretty low right now here in Olathe, Kansas, Johnson County. We've had some construction going on in the backyard uh, the last week. We're about to get a new deck, but before we could get the new deck, we had to get uh, had to get some landscaping done uh, around this area. So this is the beginning of a major project to get the backyard cleaned up here. But uh, more importantly is this wire vertical antenna that I've been working on uh, for part of the winter here. And uh, let's take a look at this and see what uh, see what it's made of. There's a uh, what is popularly referred to around here as a uh, toilet flange. It's uh, one of those things that you screw to the floor in your bathrooms and then attach your toilet to. And uh, I'm using that as a radial plate. So I've got 16 eight-foot radials uh, coming off of this thing. And that's two wavelengths of wire for a 20-meter uh, antenna. So that's working pretty good. And then I've got uh, a, a spider beam mast, the 12-meter variety, uh, sitting inside of a piece of uh, PVC pipe taped to uh, half a fence post. Well, it's not just taped, but there's also some uh, hose clamps there. I think I've shown you guys that on a uh, other video. And, uh, and then at the, uh, on the far side of this toilet flange, there's a uh, there's an SO239 and an angle bracket from uh, DX Engineering uh, that my uh, coax runs into, and at the uh, back of that SO239, there's a six inch six inch length of wire uh, that I put a uh, ring terminal on, and then I use that uh, to attach the uh, bottom end of this uh, 20 meter wire um, to with. Uh, a wing nut and a uh, thumb screw. So uh, that's what that's attached to. Uh, like I said, this is a quarter wave uh, 20 meter antenna and uh, I picked the absolute worst weekend to put this thing up. Uh, the propagation has just been terrible all weekend. Lots of solar activity the last few days and I think that uh, the K index has not gotten really much lower than three since I put this antenna up. So it really uh, it's a real challenge to uh, to make contacts this weekend uh, with any antenna, at least my experience uh, so far. Uh, the very top of this wire is held up there by a rubber board scraper that I got off of Amazon, and I drilled a hole in it so it would fit the uh, fit the second uh, highest section on this mast uh, and and sit still. So uh, now. I need to put that out a little higher next time I put it up because, you know, there's a lot of slack in the wire right now, which is probably not good for uh, for RF uh, for RF output. But uh, that kind of is what it is, and the, and the mass itself is kind of leaning right now. I don't really have a guide except for this uh, except for this piece of PVC in the fence post. But uh, I got in kind of a hurry to put it up this weekend, so I wanted to get it up and try it out, and it does work. I have made contacts, but. Uh, not, not enough to really be able to, you know, evaluate the difference in performance between the vertical antenna and, say, a flat top dipole, which is what all the other antennas that I generally use around here are. So, uh, so that is my wire vertical 20 meter dipole. The way it's designed, I can swap it out for other elements, whether it be it 10 meter or 15 meter or 12 meter and so on. Uh, I would not try and put a 40 meter quarter wave on this. I just I don't need 40 meters that bad, uh, but right now it is a single band antenna. Uh, I would need to find a way to attach another plate of some kind uh, to this assembly here at the bottom and uh, use that to uh, put radiating elements climbing up the mast, uh, but I'm not ready to do that, so uh, that'll come at a later date. I was just kind of playing around here, and in case you haven't figured it out, uh, this antenna is inspired significantly by uh, Cam's DX Commander antennas and uh, I know we've all watched a lot of his videos and they're great fun to look at but uh, um, that really is the inspiration for that but I, I wanted to do it myself uh, not only for the fun of doing that but because uh, you know at $200 for some of the uh, earlier versions of his antenna it just seemed to me that a lot of that was masked 
a lot of that cost was taken up in mast. Well, I've got masts. I've got two of these spider beam 12 meters. So uh, I just wanted to use my mast and throw a few other uh, throw, a th throw a few other bits of hardware at it and see if I could get this antenna done in a short period of time. And uh, and I did, and it appears to work. So in uh, coming weekends uh, for the summer, I'll uh, I'll get it up, uh, get it set up back here, and try and uh, you know make it uh, make it a little sturdier, a little tighter. Uh, not have all this slack in the uh, radiating element, and uh, on a on a weekend with better propagation, uh, you know, get it set up out here and give it a go and see how we do. So, uh, until next time, this is Kevin AD0IM in Johnson County, Kansas. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.